welcome everybody, this is Botany and Board. I am Bailey and today I have another how to solo for you. Today we are going to be learning how to solo the Bloody Inn. Bloody Inn is a game all about getting wealthy. Getting wealthy off of guests that come into your inn and you kill, steal their money from their pockets, and then bury them in various annexes that you have acquired. It's quite fun, quite demonic, and I love it. <laughs> so we'll begin first with a how to set it up. So I will zoom myself out a little smaller <laughs> so you guys can see the board. Okay, so first up is setup. I have set aside the frank checks here. I have located myself a player color. I am going to put my little disc here on space five. Set the game box off slightly, but yet still visible. <laughs> If that's to your liking. Uh, you will next locate the in passenger guests. Give them a good shuffle. There are two different versions. You can play short game and a long game. If you wish to play a long game, you're going to remove 26 of these cards. Return said 26 cards back to the box. You will not be using them this round. Next up from the box, locate a player aid card. Set that down in your play area. Set the welcome passengers stack to the left over here. You'll see I already have uh, put one key onto one of these rooms of the inn. This is my room. And when these guests come and stay in my room, if they survive the night, I get one franc as compensation, which I'll move up on this wealth track. You'll see these are all just novice players t keys, so I get nothing when any guests stay there. Uh, next up, you will locate some peasants. You'll put two in the bistro over here at the side, and you'll put two into your hand as your starting accomplices. They are going to help you do all of the nefarious deeds that I will get into next up in our review of the actions. So. We have effectively gotten all set up. As you can see, that takes all of like 60 seconds to get that going. Um, next up, then we will go over how the game works. So we will be going through this set of welcome passengers two times, and then that will signify the end of the game. So what are you doing on your turn? Well, there are three phases during each round. Phase number one, welcome travelers. It works like so. I'll be picking one up from the top of the desk, from the top of the deck <laughs> and the desk, and putting it out on any of these rooms I so wish. Now, I probably want to just keep somebody that I don't think I'm actually going to utilize this round so that they just stay in the inn and get me a franc at the end of the round is someone who stays in my room. The other three will have no impact. It doesn't matter which order I put them in. A lot of cops a lot of cops out there okay <laughs> so we have now welcomed yes is phase one of each round phase two is now to do your player actions so there are five different actions and you get to pick two of them so you could do the same one twice it does not matter you just have to do two different actions so the first action you can do is bribe a guest so you're going to take one traveler or two peasants from your hand into your hand so I can just bribe these two peasants from the bistro, or instead I can spend cards from my hand and bribe someone up here. The amount that it would take to bribe them, or kill them, or bury them is depicted right here in this indication right there. And then this amount is the amount of coins they have in their wallet. So when I'm looking for who I want to kill, I'm also sizing up how big their pockets are. <laughs> and the bigger pockets sometimes take more accomplices because they're bigger person, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, next up we have on your actions, you can build an annex. So um, similarly, you either take an accomplice or you take the peasants and then you use them to build an annex. So if you wanted to build an annex, any annex is something that looks like one of these little houses down here. So this one is a barn. As you can see on this little novice guy, he has an altar. 
So you'll see that it has a few things that go with this. If it has a, a special ability, it will be listed to the right. And then also, it tells me how many bodies I can bury. So you cannot bury any bodies in the altar, but in other places you can. So building an annex is another action. Kill a guest. Uh, place a guest from the inn upside down in your playing area. Next, you could bury a corpse. So you take a corpse that you've already effectively flipped over and buried in front of, or flipped over and killed in front of you, and then you can actually bury them in one of your annexes. Or in the multiplayer game, you could also bury them underneath someone else's annex. And then the fifth action you can do is pass and do nothing, or you can launder money. Why do you need to launder money? Well, we have this wealth track here that caps out at 40 francs. So you will only have room to stuff 40 francs in the wall of this inn, and then you're gonna actually need to launder some money and turn it into these checks here. So that is the fifth and final action you can do. So again, you welcome the travelers, you get to pick two actions of any of these, complete two, and then it goes to phase three, the end of the round. During the end of the round, it starts off with the police investigation. What that means, if there is a police that is left in the inn, they will effectively investigate. They will go see if I had any leftover dead bodies that were killed in front of me that were not yet buried, I would lose the game. I will be caught, go to jail, whatever, <laughs> not win the game, more importantly. Um, then next up though, if you if there have police here but you don't have anybody buried, then I don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> and next up then on phase three is travelers are going to leave. So you'll see that this novice managed to stay at my room. I will get one franc for him staying there and then all the guests will leave. Goodbye, nothing weird to see here. <laughs> and then I have to pay my accomplices because they're not working for free. So I have two peasants here, so I now have to pay them two dollars. So that is how a round works and then you will just tee it back up from the start. I will go ahead and just do one sample round of a hypothetical turn you could do, that way you kind of see how it is in motion. So I'll go ahead and set these out. Okay, so I have these two peasants here. So for one action, I'm gonna go ahead and spend one peasant and it will go right back to the bistro and I'm going to bribe this representative. So we'll take a look at the representative a, you see he has an affinity up here for bribing. So anytime I want to use this guest to bribe, I don't actually have to get rid of his card as an accomplice. He likes bribing people. He will come do that for me any day. I pay him a franc at the end of the round and he is down for it. He does not have to be discarded. He is loyal. So therefore, I just have him in my hand right now as an accomplice. So alternatively, next time, if I wanted to actually bribe this Brigadier Chief, or Brigadier, you'll see that he has one. I will say use this, bribe this guy, but then instead of having to throw this card away in the discard, I actually get to keep it. So now I have three accomplices in my hand. So you'll see the Baron stayed the night. Please, first off, please investigate. There's nobody dead here, no problem. The Baron had a lovely evening. Give me a franc. These guys go away. Got three accomplices on my payroll. They go down. Again, you would welcome guests. Well, let's say this time, so I'm good at bribing people. So I could use something like a peasant in this and bribe this guy. But instead, you know, just so I can show you guys how this works, let's go ahead and kill somebody. So we're going to use the Brigadier Chief. We're going to kill... The monk. I'm gonna kill the monk. Okay, so we kill her. He has an affinity for killing. Again, he's doing it, done, doesn't care. He's like right back here for you, ready to go. <laughs> so action number one, I've killed. Secondly, there are no police, so I don't have to get this buried, but it's good just to kind of keep up on it, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and bury this guy as well. So it takes me one accomplice to bury, so I'm gonna get rid of one of my peasants to, in order to bury this card. So I'll bury it right underneath my barn like so because it has a space of one for one body. I then get $12. So now I'm at 14. And again, concierge on a lovely night. 
everybody leaves, and I pay my accomplices. And so on and so forth until you have ran out of this deck twice. Uh, the game plays, it is a beat your own score, which is not my favorite kind of way to play solo, but I do find it uh, very rewarding still as well. So you can kind of see the brackets. So troubling innkeeper, dangerous, evil, and demonic. Uh, spoiler alert, I just did a playthrough for you all today. If you have only watched this how to play and not the playthrough, I do win. I get to be a demonic innkeeper with 176 as my score. <laughs> so I thought you guys, Thank you so much for hanging out. This was our second ever How to Soul. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments um, if this was helpful for you um, or if you like this kind of video. I'd be happy to find out either way. <laughs> so thank you guys so much and I will see you next time.